So I know a lot of people think that they probably can't afford to take six months off and go cruising. And you might be right, you might be wrong, but we are gonna break down our costs this summer. I'm Taryn, this is Logan, and this is Max. Join us as we live and sail in the Pacific Northwest on our 40 foot steel sailboat. Hey guys, so this week we're gonna do a video that's pretty out of the ordinary for us. We're gonna chat about what it cost us to cruise for six months here. We left Campbell River in April and we cruised until October when we hauled the boat out and that's why we are in a room instead of filming this on the boat because in real life, in real time, we're working on boat projects. Also, <clears throat> I'm just getting over COVID so that's why if I sound like crap it's because I'm getting over a sickness. Logan is probably already had it but we're not sure so if he sounds like crap it might that's just ridiculous. normal <laughs> that's just a regular tuesday so i know a lot of people think that they probably can't afford to take six months off and go cruising and you might be right you might be wrong but we are going to break down our costs this summer just to give you a general overview of what things cost for us as well as where we think we could have cut costs um, where we weren't willing to compromise and just generally what things cost. Also to preface this, um, we're in Canada obviously and there's things are a lot more expensive in Canada than in many parts of the world so cruising somewhere else might be cheaper. Also we're dealing with inflation this year from COVID outfall <laughs> so prices of things like food are a lot higher this year than they were in previous years. Um, and also we just bought this boat. So like we bought the boat March 1st, we left the dock April 8th. So it's usually you spend about 20% of whatever you paid for the boat on the boat fixing it up. So if you're wondering why our costs are so high when it comes to actually doing repairs and stuff, a lot of that has to do with the fact that we just had gotten this boat and we were doing repairs as we traveled this summer. Yes, and when we sold our last boat, um, some of the stuff that we had bought for that boat or for being out on the water safety gear etc went with that boat so then anything that was expired or needed to be um, recertified or whatever this year we had to pay for all of that as well yeah so there was there's just a lot of costs that had to do with getting a new boat so you ready to jump into this <laughs> yes <laughs> yes head first Okay, so our total monthly costs, including repairs, were was $3,234 per month with repairs. Which sounds like a lot, and it was a lot. That is not, I would say, a normal thing. Like, once we're back in the water next year, our bills should be lower per month than that because we shouldn't be spending so much money on things like paint, upgrading stuff whatever else you spend money on. Tooling. Tooling, yeah. Um, and then without repairs, our monthly bills were somewhere between $2,100 and $2,300. So essentially we did this, <clears throat> or could be doing this, at about $2,500 a month without any compromises. So that's not too bad. That's definitely not cheap but that's manageable and again that's without any compromises that's like going out when we want to that's buying the food that we want to that's um paying for subscriptions for stuff still <laughs> like we're still paying for netflix that includes internet and our phones so all of that is included in that twenty five hundred dollars a month yeah our single largest cost what would you have thought it was before I did all the math and let you know what it was? Food. Would you have thought that? <laughs> Are you just saying that because I told you already? <laughs> no, actually, like, we like to eat. Oh, Max. Yeah, Max. Max. Hi, buddy. This is Max, in case you don't know Max. Come sit. Sit. Definitely, um... I would think food. Yeah. But that's just because I know like what we spend on food on a regular basis and it didn't really change all that much other than some of the remote places, communities, 
or more remote communities, food is quite a bit more. Mm hmm So. Yeah. Definitely food. <clears throat> and he would be right, because we spent over $1,000 a month on food. Which sounds like a lot, but again, that was without any compromises. So we went to the grocery store, we bought stuff to make our own meals for every single meal. We didn't buy processed stuff other than s snacks. Like we bought some chips and we bought some chocolate bars and things like that. Um, that also included eating out a little bit. So our bill for eating out, which is included in that general food bill, was $263 a month on average. And one of the biggest reasons why our food cost is high is because we try to buy as much local or organic food, something healthier. Um, yeah, and higher end food that like, tastes better and is healthier. Yeah, I mean, I really do spend a lot of time reading the packaging, and if I can't pronounce it, <laughs> I generally don't buy that food. Yeah. So, uh, you could, we could definitely cut down our costs on food. Eventually, I think we will have to probably buy some products that we normally wouldn't. But the other thing with the food too is that because this was a new boat to us, we were restocking a pantry from square one. So that meant that we were buying a lot more provisions that we'd probably regularly have on board. We did live off the land quite a bit, but that honestly didn't bring the bill down that much. It brought our meat bill down quite a bit. So we didn't have to buy, we didn't buy a lot of meat compared to what we usually do. Um, we also had a freezer or a fridge full of meat go bad on us when our fridge died the first time. Yeah, there was that too. Oh yeah, and so two of those months that we spent, we spent in Port McNeil reprovisioning, which was, it's like a northern community, so like Logan was saying, that's more expensive. So if we'd been able to buy a lot of canned and preserved goods before we'd gotten up there, it probably would have been cheaper. But again, we were on a new boat and we didn't really know what we were going to need. This was our first summer cruising, so we didn't really have a good idea of what we needed on board before we kind of left the dock. So that had a lot to do with that. Yeah, we didn't know where we were going and we didn't do enough research on what was actually out there and what was actually open at the time. Mm -hmm. um, there was still a lot of areas and places that we couldn't get to and then where there was generally, where there would have been a general store where you could reprovision and whatnot, um, they didn't really stock very much. And because of that, the prices had gone up quite high. Mm -hmm. Also just getting fresh veggies and stuff in Northern communities is just more expensive and that's just the way that it is. So yeah, if we could grow more on board, if we could can more and if we could forage more, we probably be better off that way but that's a very long process which we're in the process of doing we're getting there but this i think was the most surprising thing to me our fuel costs so our fuel costs were only about 176 dollars a month which is definitely less than we spend on gas when we're on land by quite a bit yeah, that's like two trips in the car. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, so our car right now, we've got two vehicles right now for what we're doing. Um, each of them costs about, what, 60 to $70 to fill up? No, the car is about 80 and the truck is 60 So, so both not great. Obviously, obviously we didn't do as many kilometers when we were on the boat, but um, we still did a thousand nautical miles, which is about 18, 1900 kilometers. So that's still quite a bit of traveling. And if you're wondering why we're driving so much, um, everything here, like where we are on Vancouver Island, is really far apart. Like to get to the boat, it's just in the next town over, but it is 20 kilometers in a straight line. <laughs> um, and then if I'm going to town to the boat and back, that's 40 something kilometers and if I have to go to town it's an extra whatever and like any day if we're even just going to the boat going to get groceries and coming back we're putting nearly 100 kilometers on every single day yeah but if we have to go to 
um, like to this, like the bigger cities to get tools or supplies for welding or any of that stuff. Um, then it's, we're putting on like 150 kilometers a day, 200 sometimes pretty easily. Yeah. I mean, yeah, get... it doesn't take long to rack up that distance at all. So, and there's no public transit, so driving is the only option. So there's not many opportunities for cutting that bill down while we're on land. So it's definitely a lot more cost effective to be on the boat and be traveling and just walking places from the boat or going with somebody or renting a car or whatever on the rare occasions that you actually need to do that. There's a few bills that we definitely could cut down on in order to make that monthly cost quite a bit lower. Those three things are eating out, because we could just make our meals and that saves probably, you go from like $15 a dish to like five to $10 a dish. So that cuts down a lot of cost. Eating out was $263 a month. So we could again, cut that down to probably about half without much effort because we still need to eat. It's not like we're not gonna eat those days, but we could cut the bill down on what we're eating to at least half, potentially lower than that. The chances of us doing that to the extent where we fully cut out eating out is zero because we just enjoy food too much. And honestly, going out to eat is like one of the greatest joys of my life. I really like it. So I'm definitely not gonna stop doing that. Logan tries and I'm always like, let's just go out for food. So I'm the bad influence there. I will take full responsibility for that because I really enjoy eating out and could cut that out, probably won't. Moorage, so we stayed in quite a few places this summer because we it was just convenient or safer. Like Campbell River, when we're there, there's really only the option of staying in the marina because we don't have a good enough dinghy to rip across the street to go to the grocery store. Um, and then other, every other place, pretty much, it was just more convenient or easier or whatever at the time to stay somewhere, so that's what we did. Yeah, so Moorage was about $359 a month, which honestly, that was probably the most surprising expense to me as far as what we spent. I didn't think we spent that much money. It was mostly because it's summertime and the rates everywhere double in the summertime. A lot of these places we could anchor nearby and then just dingy to wherever we needed to do things, but when we went into the marinas, it was either because we just didn't feel like doing that and we wanted to make things easier on ourselves, especially because it's a new boat and we were just learning all these things. Or it was a safety concern, like I said. Um, for instance, we stayed in Nanaimo once and that was because there was a big storm coming and we weren't feeling well, so it seemed to make more sense for us to sit in the marina because it was just safer because we've always had to take the dog to shore. Camel River again, safety thing. Um, and there's nowhere to anchor in Campbell. No, there's no like other you, option. You don't have an option when you're there. <clears throat> I mean, if we needed to, if we were running short on money at the time, we could have just, other than Campbell River, probably cut out all of those stays. And potentially, we might have left Nanaimo for the two days that we were in there. Yeah, and we left the boat <clears throat> in Nanaimo on the mooring ball too for like, like a while. It was like two weeks. We were on and off the boat. Yeah. You were working. I was doing whatever boat projects and mm -hmm. getting stuff organized for supplies and materials. Yep. And then the third one was alcohol. Tara drinks a lot. I don't drink. I don't drink <laughs> at all. I have maybe one drink a month. So. <laughs> So somebody else likes his beer and his whiskey. We can cut down a little bit on the, <laughs> on the alcohol bill. We can just shave a little off the top. Oh my God. Maybe. Maybe. We'll see. Booze was $236.71 a month and that's not including your eating out bills for booze. So somebody needs to support my whiskey habit. <laughs> Logan really likes his scotch <laughs> and his fancy Phillips beers. Yeah. And dark matter. Dark matter. But also, yeah, scotch is pricey. 
Yeah. And delicious. <laughs> so, so if we cut down the eating out by half, our morage cut out completely, which again we wouldn't do probably with Campbell River, but other than that, and cut the booze down by half, we could get our bills per month down to $1,600 to $1,800 a month. Which is a lot more reasonable, and we could probably do this for a long time. Yeah, quite a bit longer. And if we did food differently and cooked with cheaper ingredients, we could probably get that bill down by probably $100 or $200 a month. Also, like, because this was a shakedown cruise, we could get our fuel costs down. Yes. I think we can get our fuel mm -hmm. costs down quite a bit further because we ended up motoring a lot this summer um, just because we didn't have the time to wait. There was that and also we knew that we had weaknesses in the boat structurally that we didn't really want to push. <clears throat> so like whether that we might be ready to go into this following season, we weren't ready to go into this previous season just because I was scared of pushing the boat and ending up in harm's way in a very dangerous area. And we generally, we ended up going on days that were a little too light and it would have been nice to have a bit more wind. Yeah. So we definitely have plans to do things differently in, in the coming season um, to save money on fuel, essentially. Be also, because we're in Canada, data costs are insane. So we have two cell phones and a ZTE um, wireless internet box thing, which you're not supposed to take traveling with you. It's supposed to be for people that live outside of regular um, internet service areas. But between those three devices, it costs us like 200 some dollars a month, $230 probably a month to have data on, be able to connect with the world with the internet. So that's pretty insane. That we'll have to definitely look at and reevaluate in the coming, I don't know, a couple of years, I guess, to figure out what we actually need and what is valuable to us. But, yeah, so anyway, that's just another thing that we potentially could save costs on if we only had one cell phone, if we were able to do things with less data, stuff like that. Um, but that's the kind of thing that we will reevaluate as we go. Yeah, if you've got cruising plans, I hope this helps you out a little bit to kind of understand what our costs were. Um, I hope it helps you to kind of look at what your cost might be, the kind of money that you maybe need to save to keep cruising to go out cruising. And yeah, let us know in the comments below what you thought would be more, what you thought we'd have spent more on, what you thought we would have spent less on, and what you think you would spend more or less on. Also, this by no means is what everybody, like, spends like it's so different here some people get away with spending, spending nothing. almost nothing um this is just what we've spent and uh, yeah. yeah how we've tried to how we're trying to figure it out i guess yeah and thanks for tuning in guys um next week gets into the wonderful mess that has been our boat projects. So get ready for a wild ride with that one because things have definitely changed a lot. Um, plans did not go as we thought they would. And continue to <clears throat> not go as we thought they would. Yeah, today would have been a boat day, but we don't know for sure whether or not Logan's had COVID and he's got two uncles that are immune compromised that he can't be around until he's had COVID and the, both those uncles live on the property where the boat is right now. So that's the whole story. So keep keep tuned in to, to hear those lovely stories, eh? Yep, this is the year of being in limbo. This is the year of trying, of getting very good at changing your plans as things adapt and roll forward, because otherwise nothing would be getting done. Cool, we'll see you guys next week. <laughs>